Welcome back to the Discovering Commercial Real Estate Podcast. We're privileged to have, have the founder and CEO of Treadway, Will Blodgett, here with us today. Well, it's a pleasure having you on. Thank you again for doing this. Thanks a lot for having me here. I really appreciate it. It's good to be here. It's of a course. great studio. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, Will, before we talk business, uh, give us a little background on where you're from and why you got into this industry. Yeah, sure. Uh, I was born uh, back in the back in the city of Chicago. Um, spent many of my formative years there. Moved out of Chicago uh, to go to high school in Laguna Beach, California. Uh, after going to Laguna Beach, California, I did a fifth year of high school at Deerfield Academy. Uh, you, you know, I was one of those scholarship kids there. Uh, and then I went, uh, and, you know, went and played on the football team at Yale. I was a good athlete, so that helped me there. But, um, uh, yeah, I grew up in a, a, a humble home in Chicago with the stutter. Um, definitely wouldn't say it was easy, but very, but very thankful for every single minute of it. Uh, we moved out of Chicago because, you know, like of my stutter, I kind of grew up in a rough area and I was getting into a lot of fights mm -hmm. and, and I was slated to go to one of the worst high schools in Chicago, which at the time was one of the worst public school systems in the country. And if you made fun of my stutter, you know, I odds are we were getting into a fight and uh so i moved to laguna beach high school into a with the help of my dad's parents and um you know well i guess let's take a step back in chicago a lot of my friends did live in affordable housing a lot of my friends lived in the chicago housing authority mm. um and when i was there if you remember here john that's when they tore down the chicago housing authority so all my friends are there on a Tuesday, right? And, you, you know, as a kid like me there, you know, I really felt like an outsider, didn't have a lot of friends, mm. but I did have a few good friends. And 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 they were all there on Tuesday. They were gone the next Thursday, mm. right? And and that kind of had a profound impact on my life. Okay. And I didn't know what it was, but I knew that I wanted to, like, help my friends, you know, in the – in the – um metaphorical sense right mm. and uh you know that kind of manifested itself in the housing right because because mm. when they're there on tuesday gone thursday they moved all these folks that live in the chicago housing authority which was actually a high opportunity area right mm. it was around the l it was around the trains and the buses around you know good uh places of health care and education and they moved these folks out, you know, into the sticks, basically, mm. onto farmland where it was blight on top of blight and there wasn't any opportunity. Um, and that kind of always stuck with me, you know. So um, going from Chicago to Laguna Beach to do my fifth year at Airfield Academy, going to play football at Yale, you know, um, that, that kind of always sat in the – Back of your you mind. know, in the back of my mind. Um, and uh, so I got out of college in 2006, you know, and probably kind of ironically or sorry, paradoxically, but I was a kid with the stutter that uh, my first, first job 2006 was I was working for a company uh, raising equity, you know, mm. doing, doing, sorry, what's it called? Cold calling, mm. you know? Okay. So that helps you deal a lot with the, the, the overall themes of rejection. Right. You get rejected a lot, which was good. You know, that, that's really healthy, uh, you know, I think. And then, um, uh, and then from there I got into, you know, specializing in multifamily housing, um, I ended up going, my friend became appointed to be the head of the New York City Housing Authority. Mm, okay. So he was the chairman of the New York City Housing Authority, which uh, you may or may not know, but is the biggest housing authority in North America, right. the second biggest housing authority in, in you know, on earth. And uh, so he was appointed by Mayor Bloomberg. I was his first hire. So I helped him run the housing authority for a while, then went back to get my MBA at MIT. Mm. And uh, I really learned the affordable housing business, uh, 
you know, I started as an intern at Related, working for Stephen Ross there in his affordable group. I got a full-time job there mm. after MIT. Mm. And that's where I really, you know, cut my teeth in the affordable housing business. Um, and from working at Related, I went on to uh, be a, be a sorry, what's it called? Founding, founding partner of the... Uh, of the affordable housing real estate company called Fairstead. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I grew that to one of the biggest affordable housing developers in the country. Left Fairstead at the end of 2021 and started what's now Treadway. Uh, started Treadway, you know, end of 2021, beginning of 2022. Mm. And we're focusing, we're, we're 100% focused on building, sorry, building, creating, preserving affordable housing across the country. Great. Awesome. And um, I read that you were often the loudest, more, most passionate fan in any sports arena. I want to know how sports kind of shaped um, you as an individual. Uh, and do you think they kind of gave you an edge in real estate? With sports, one, I had an outlet, right? You know, as a kid, I had a lot of anger probably because of my stutter. Uh, didn't have a lot of friends, so I had a lot of anger. I definitely had an edge there, and the sports was the outlet for me. So that was one to, like, know that, like, you learn how to uh, harness that energy, right? Mm-hmm. I had a lot of maybe some would call bad energy or negative energy because I was angry, and I harnessed that anger into a way that helped me, into a positive way. Mm. Uh, and so I learned through sports that you could take, you know, all those emotions that you're feeling and kind of flip them on their head mm. and turn it into a good thing, right? There's a quote by the Roman general, Marcus Aurelius, which goes, the impediment to action advances action. Yeah. What stands in the way becomes the way. And uh, the impediment. The actual imp- the actual imp- impediment to my action was my speech impediment mm. that created this anger and this angst in me. And uh, instead of viewing that as a negative, as an obstacle, right, as something that's a roadblock, I ch- ch- chose to view that as a springboard. Mm. And I used that as a fuel to kind of go forward. And that first came out in sports, right? Uh, you know, I was athlete year at my school and stuff like that. And then I went on to play football at Yale. Um, and I also think that through sports, you learn how to, you, you really learn how to deal with overcoming adversity. Mm. You learn about respect, how it has to be earned, right? Respect is not just, it's not just given people in the locker room don't care, you know, who your dad is or, or how much, you know, or, you know, how much, uh, how, sorry, how much money in your bank account. Mm-hmm. You really got to earn that respect. Um, and you got to earn it by, you know, being, by being, sorry, what's it called? You know, sorry, uh, shoulder to shoulder mm. inside the trenches, if you will. Um, and I also learned through sports, the power of relationships, the power of partnerships, the power of teamwork, right? How, you have to be, you have to be, sorry, counted on and relied on to do your job. And you have to be able to let go enough and not be such a control freak and a micromanager to be able to count on and rely on the person who's to the right of you, the person who's to the left of you Mm. to do their job. Right. Uh, And all those lessons I learned through sports. You know, I played every sport you could imagine. I was in the football team, the basketball team, the volleyball team, the track and field team, mm. baseball team, you know. So, um, yeah, I learned a tremendous amount through sports. Awesome. And do you play sports to this day? I saw you run marathons, the Boston and New York City ones. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've, sorry, I've done a whole bunch of marathons. I still play basketball. Uh, I do, you know, I try to do, uh, I try to do something active every day, awesome. either in the weight room or on the treadmill or outside running. I work out with friends. That's I work great. out in groups. I really, you know, take my healthcare really seriously now as I'm getting older. I found, you know, as you turn, you know, I, I am now, sorry, I am now, I am now 40 years old. And something happened when I turned 40 that like all of the, you know, like everything started to go, my knee, my mm. ankle, my shoulder, all these old football injuries started to come back. And so I started to really you know, spend a lot of time in the gym and spend a lot of time. Take your health more serious. Yeah, 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 exactly. Awesome. And could you describe to the audience what your company Treadway is and what you kind of focus on? 
Right. So Redway is an affordable housing and real estate development company. We specialize in the acquisition, preservation of, sorry, creation of uh, all different types of affordable housing, right? So that's housing for, for sorry, very low income all the way up to uh, mixed income housing. Um, we're currently in eight states. We currently own or have under contract around 4,500 units. Mm. Um which is pretty good because we, you know, sorry, just got started, uh, and we're we're f- really focused on the end of the day providing homes that uh, spark and enable upward upward socio economic mobility. Perfect, right? We kind of look at everything through two different types of lenses, right? Does this achieve attractive risk adjusted returns? Right. Uh, and does this promote upward socioeconomic mobility? And if the answer to both those questions are yes, mm. right, then that's uh, an opportunity that we as a team at Treadway will begin to focus on. Awesome. Great. Um, and you said in an interview with Commercial Observer that starting Treadway was like a brief period of insanity. What inspired you to kind of go all in and fill this gap in the market? Look, as I said earlier, right, I grew up in a humble home in Chicago with a stutter. Like all my friends lived in affordable housing and the housing authority. I, I just believe that uh, this, this sorry, country of ours, America, is founded on the premise of upward socioeconomic mobility, right? I think there are three key, there are three key pillars to that. It's healthcare, education, and housing, mm. right? The, the, the one that I am choosing to, to sorry, tackle, if it's you housing. will, is affordable housing, is housing, right? Um, I think if done right, housing can can really can really be a springboard for people to to go off and do amazing things with their lives, right? I think if it's you know not just high not just high, sorry, what's it called? Quality affordable mm-hmm. housing, which is very, very important. Has to be clean, has to be safe. Um, but it also has to be high opportunity. It has to be around education. It has to be around jobs. Mm. It has to be around infrastructure, right? You, you know, it can't take a person an hour and a half to get to work, an hour mm. and a half to get home from work, you know, when you can't spend time with your kids. Um, and then also can't just be affordable housing on top of affordable housing, top of affordable housing, blight on top of blight. You have to have mixed income, right? Mm. You have to have the kid who's coming down the elevator, going to get in the school bus in the corner, you know, instead of seeing somebody that's perhaps is up to no good, right, selling drugs, stuff like that, they're coming down the elevator and they're running into a guy who's working as an investment banker, right? right. And they're asking that guy what he does. They're getting the bus with a woman who, who's an attorney mm. and they're asking her what she does, right? And these are the folks that, that become the inspiration. Right. These are the folks that, that become the the role models, if you will. And that's what we're trying to do at Treadway, right? It's, it's of course, high quality. That's a given. Safe and clean, someplace that's bright, you mm-hmm. feel good about, you feel home, right? But also where it's built, right? It's, it's actual uh, purpose of location is very, very important, right? Like, can the person who's the, who's the adult in the home get, at the work within an hour, get home within an hour. Right. Are there good opportunities for education? Are there good opportunities for employment? Is there good health care? Mm-hmm. Is there healthy food in the area? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, and you said in that same interview with Commercial Observer that um, that you want to own 30,000 affordable units by 2025. You know, I think um, there was a point where I was, you know, I thought that this was a, it, it, we were focused on, you know, on the acquisition and accumulation and, and on accumulating as many units as possible, right? Uh, it was like, it was almost like a, a, a volume play because mm. uh, that's how I thought, you know, I, I was really obsessed with the overall, with the overall complexities of housing people at scale, mm. right? I said, we have five million units right now in America that were that were currently short of affordable mm. housing. Five million units, and that's growing by about five hundred thousand units a year. It's not mm. shrinking, right? And I think they build every year new three hundred fifty thousand new condos. Sorry, new uh, 
new, sorry, rentals a year. Mm. So if you really wanna have impact, right? I said, oh, it's scale, you gotta scale, right? Um, but it's kind of like being on the airplane where they say, you know, if there's any type of accident, please put the mask on yourself and then put the mask on the person right. next to you, right? You really gotta build very methodically. You gotta be, you gotta build very carefully. You gotta take care of the organization first, make sure that it's in a very healthy place so that you can continue to build so mm -hmm. that you can be a, a truly a truly sustainable organization, both from how you operate your buildings, but also how you operate your actual mm -hmm. your actual company, right? And how you do that is you have to build slowly. You got to build methodically. You got to be incredibly dis incredibly discerning mm -hmm. with every opportunity that you take on, every project that you take on, right? We probably look, for every one deal we do, we look at a thousand, mm. right? That's an insane statistic, right? Um, and I, I mean, of course you have the, you have this, sorry, what's it called? Top of the funnel, mm. right? And that is very, very it quick, quick, down. boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Then it comes down to a hundred. Mm -hmm. Then we're probably gonna, you know, really start to spend time and model on those hundred. Then you probably come down to 10, where you're 10, wow, we could do right. these and that's one, right. right? And you do that over and over again. And what ultimately happens is it's not a focus on accumulating as many units as, as you can, but a focus on overall levels of, sorry, profitability, mm. right? Because when you're financially healthy, then you're sustainable. And when you're sustainable, then you can have impact. And when mm. you have impact, you know, that's what really, uh, to me at least, helps me and our team feel good about the work that we're doing. Got it. Okay, great. So you decided to kind of take that focus of, um, instead of focusing on quantity, focus on quality and kind of hammer quality. down. Quality. Yeah. I would say a overall, you know, an overall flight to quality. Got it. Really. And, and, and doing it right. Okay. And doing it right the first time, right? The old adage measure twice and cut once, right? right? Uh, uh, make, sh just, you know, make 100% sure that you're getting it right. Got it. Right, and, and that those who you are, are serving, you're serving well. Got it. Right, and, and you're really, you know, doing what you are, really doing what you say you're gonna do. Mm. Okay, understood. And um, can you discuss any partnerships or collaborations that Treadway has established with local governments or nonprofit organizations um, to kind of further your mission? Look, uh, you know, I said earlier in this conversation, I think the three main, you know, let me take a step back. Like I, I said earlier in this conversation that this is a country I believe that's founded in the premise of upward socioeconomic mm -hmm economic mobility. The three main, main components of that are healthcare, education, and housing. Health, you know, uh, 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 education has become a right, mm. obviously. Healthcare became a right under Obama. And I believe it's crucial for us as a country that housing becomes a right. Mm. We're spending more money on a, one single man in prison for one year than we're spending on a kid's education all the way through K through when they get out of high school, yeah. right? That's not a sustainable type of a model, right? Um, uh, and the way that housing is gonna become a right is truly through public-private partnerships, right? PPP. Uh, Every single deal we do at Treadway is a public-private partnership mm -hmm. with HUD, with HPD, with different housing authorities across the country, different agencies across the country. We couldn't do what we do without those public-private right. partnerships, right? That's the future of housing. I believe the future of housing is, is housing is, is becoming a right. And I believe in order for it to become a right, it, it has to be in the form of public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we are focusing on at Treadway. Okay. Got it. And your recent acquisition um, of the Sea Park Apartments in Coney Island, um, I know Victor Sozio worked with you on that, who we've had on the podcast. Um, how did this transaction kind of come about and what's your plan with it? Uh, one, yeah. Uh, so Vic Sozio is a great guy. Uh, he's one of the smartest people in the business. Yeah. 
Um, he he's great because he really gets in the weeds. He really understands, which is you know, you know, for all the people out there coming up, you know, you should really. Um, there's a lot that you can learn from Victor Sozio. Right. You know, uh, he he understands what everything is that he's talking about and understands how the small piece of the puzzle fit into the big piece of the puzzle. And he also understands first level consequences, second level consequences, third level consequences. Right. Uh, he's a super impressive guy. Um, look, this was kind of going back at what I said a little bit, but this is at scale, right? This is 816 units. Um, we're partnering here with the Gil Bipane companies. Mm. Uh, we out an LP here, very, very strong LP. Um, uh, and, um, and you, you know, the goal here, this is, this is a public private partnership with HPD and HTC and HCR. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, it's an existing 816 units out in Coney Island, which, you know, there was a great article recently in New York post about Coney Island. Uh, how it's truly an overlooked part of New York City. Yeah. It's an amazing area with the boardwalk and the beach and you can get there on all different types of trains. And you have, like we talked about great schools, you have Mark Twain Elementary right. School is right there, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal elementary school. Uh, I actually have some friends who went there who went on to Harvard and Harvard and now started hedge funds and, you know, like all that stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, also a little known fact about Coney Island is that 25% uh, of the people that live out there are over the age of 62. Right. So we're going to be building there in partnership with the Gilbain companies, 250 units of 250 units of senior it's affordable right. housing. That's really exciting yeah. for me because the building itself is going to have a lot of amenities. It's going to be a beautiful building, have a lot of great amenities for the seniors so they can age in place with the dignity and a respect that they so deserve. Mm. But the best amenity here, John, is giving me neighborhood. Mm. That's to me the best amenity. And right. that's really exciting for me. Awesome, great. And and what what do you look for in an ideal capital partner for your acquisitions? It's all about your values, okay. right? Like at the end of the day, it really comes down to your values. Um, um, you know, uh, we, you know, like, of course, you spend a lot of money on lawyers and you want to make sure you, like all your LPAs are buttoned up and everything. But, but you know, you really want to be very comfortable with, with the person, you know, that you're, that you're ultimately shaking hands with, mm. right? You, you have to have a handshake agreement at the end of the day. Right. That, that's what all this stuff is. And, and, you know, do you really care about what we're doing, you know, um, uh, you know, we've done extremely well in this business, right? But it, it, it's inevitable. You're going to have some bumps in the road, right? Uh, are you going to be there when the, you know, when the times aren't as easy, right. when they aren't as good, um, right? You know, we, we, we are constantly talking about, you know, is this someone we want on the team or not on the team, right? right? And, and it really comes down to what's your level of integrity. Okay. What's your values, right? Um, uh, and is that the person who you want to the right of you and the left of you? Got it. You know, okay. like if things get tough. So you, you, would you say your focus is more on the why of the investor versus who can kind of write the biggest check or- Oh, fast? certainly. There's plenty of capital out there. Right. The, the world is awash in capital. Um, and it seems like every day there's some new fund or some new investor who's calling who wants to get into affordable housing. Right. It 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 really is about the hu human being who's across the table from you, right? The human being that you're going out, you know, going up and down these stairwells well with and looking at these units right. with and you know, like what what makes her or him tick, mm. right? Is it about making as much about making the biggest return you can, mm -hmm. or is it about, right, okay, let's take into account the risk-adjusted returns and couple that with impact, right? right? And, uh, you know, John, 
you would be very surprised. There are a lot of people out there. I'm not sure if you'd be surprised or not, but there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, really care about the impact, that really care about right. the work. It's not just about the returns. Right. And so there really are a lot of what I call, tr sorry, triple bottom line p people and organizations out there that impact focused. want to do well, right? Look, if you don't do well in this business, you're not going to be, a, like you won't be around for that long. Right want to do good, want to help people, and then also want to help Earth, you know? And and 65% of the carbon emissions uh, on this globe come from the built environment, yeah. right? So if we can do our part as owners of multifamily housing and these big buildings that we're acquiring make a difference. and the buildings that we're building, mm -hmm. um, that's awesome. That's an amazing feeling. You can do well, you can help people, and you can help the planet. Like... It's awesome. Yeah, it's a wins. win, win, win. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And um, let's say someone right now is 22 years old watching this and they want to start acquiring affordable housing. How can they kind of get started in this business with no tracker, track record? You got to have a tremendous amount of humility. Mm. Uh, and with that, I think, comes a tremendous amount of 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 patience. Mm. You gotta have a lot of patience. You gotta have a lot of humility and you have to get into the weeds. You gotta roll up your sleeves mm. and don't be afraid to start small. Don't be afraid to to go, you know, work with or for someone else that has a lot of years in the specific big A affordable housing mm. space, right? Working with bonds and tax credits and project-based section eight and section 202s and 236s, really understand the programs, right? You, you this, this is an industry, if you don't know an inch, you don't know in a mile, right? You, mm. th 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 this is a niche within a niche. And uh, you really need to go very specific, very, 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 very focused and very deep. Uh, and and take it one step at a time. Right. Really take it one step at a time. Okay, understood. How do you set yourself apart with brokers so that they call you first when a good deal comes across their desk? With the broker, you know, look, at the end of the day, they want to recommend to their client somebody who obviously is going to pay their client what their client wants, mm but also somebody's going to close, right? Mm. And in order to close, you have to be able to execute. Mm. So we've built a reputation at Treadway of people who can execute, right? And by being people who can execute are people that who can close. Mm. And I think that is very, very important to investment sales brokers. I don't think I know. So, you know, since I've been in this business, I developed a name and reputation as somebody who can really execute, mm. who really gets in the weeds, is very, de very detailed oriented, focused on the data, right? Right. Well, 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 uh, what's the math? What's the data? Right. And then as a person who can execute and close. Mm. And I think over the years that has enabled me to earn a tremendous amount of respect within the investment sales community, mm. uh, where, you know, we're oftentimes the first call and even mm. sometimes the only call, mm. right? This is something that has to get done. It has to get done quickly, has to get done quietly. And we know that you can close. We know that you, you know, have the, you know, that you have the expertise, you have the mm. relationships, you have the capital, uh, and you're a person who can execute. I think that's what really kind of sets you apart. Got it. Okay, understood. And let's say somebody just graduated college and is looking to get into commercial real estate. How would you um, recommend for them to go about finding their niche within the business? Specific. You got to stay specific. Mm. Um, um, you got to stay very, you have to stay incredibly focused. Mm. Right. Um, in this business, yes, you work in the quote unquote industry of real estate, but that is so wide. That mm -hmm. can mean so many different things. High end condos, industrial, healthcare, you know, class A office, class B office, class C office, affordable housing, mixed income housing, you know, 
you know, sorry, single family rentals, blah, it get, goes on, 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 right? And in this industry, I think you get a lot of folks who have what we call at the office of Treadway style drift, right? Mm. Um, I, coming out of college, right? You should, spick a, you should pick a lane, stick to it for a few years and become the best at that mm. in the world. Specialized. Focused on becoming the best at that at the world. Mm. And with that comes the next rung on the ladder and the next rung on the ladder, the next rung on the ladder. You don't necessarily know where it's gonna come from, right? You 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 can kind of see around the corner and you can kind of, you know, have those um those instincts. Um but but stay specific, stay really in the zone and stay mm. focused. Got it. Okay. And how do you go about setting goals for yourself and for your company? It's all about your values, mm. right? Um, what's your values as an individual? What's your values as a company? So when you come, you know, when you come to a point where you got to make a decision, it's really not based on the decision. It's mm. based off of who do I want to be as a person, right? Who do we want to be as an organization? And that, you know, makes the answer to those decisions oftentimes incredibly easy. Easy, okay, got right? it. Right, it makes it a lot easier to say no a lot more. It doesn't align with their values. So if you know and yourself that's more, as you as can that. kind of answer that question better. That's right. Like if you know yourself more and if you know the type of organization that you're trying mm. to build more, right? If you're truly aligned with those within and those who I say, you know, like are on the team, you know, the investment sales brokers, right. the guys, at the banks, our tax credit syndicators, all of the various different types of attorneys what we are with, right? Like um, if if those folks align with their values and if you know who you wanna be as a person and the type of overall group that you're trying to build, mm. right? Those types of decisions become easier and easier. Got it, okay, understood. And if if you were to zoom out and look at trends in your interests and your skill sets. What's kind of the overall theme that led you to this point today? I think because of how I grew up, right? Because of my stutter, um, I have a tremendous amount of empathy. Mm. And um, kind of, as, as I said at the beginning of the show, right? I always knew I wanted to help my friends. I didn't know what that meant, mm. right? And I think what that meant was that I have a lot of empathy and I want to help people, mm. right? But I also am a very, you know, very competitive person, right? I've been an athlete my whole life. I was on a football team in college. Mm. Um, so I found an area where, you know, being empathetic is not a weakness, mm -hmm. right? And uh, which I don't think it ever is a weakness, but, you know, especially in the affordable housing area, you know, being vulnerable, right, is a strength. And, you know, I'm a pretty vulnerable guy. Mm -hmm. um, so I think being, sorry, vulnerable, being empathetic uh, and being very, sorry, very competitive, mm. right? Um, steered me to be in the affordable housing business. Got it. Right, steered me to, uh, I want to do well, but I really want to help people mm. and I want to have impact, Great. right? And I want to have impact on uh, those that we have on the team. I want to have impact that those, um, you know, uh, those in the, sorry, in the, sorry, communities in which we serve, those in our properties, all the residents, right? Um, you know, I, I, at Treadway, we, we want to lift all people. We want to mm. lift all groups, mm. including ourselves. Got it. What would you say makes a good leader or a good principal? I think a good leader is going back to like, you, you know, like you have to have a tremendous amount of empathy, Mm. Uh, 
servant-based type leadership, I think is very, very important, right? Um, you have to be willing and able and oftentimes do the work yourself. Mm. You know, lead with your lead with your chin, if you will. I got a pretty big one so I can, <laughs> you know, uh, so I push it forward. You know, there's a quote, I forget who said it, you know, it's, it's tell uh, your team what you want to do uh, and be surprised with how they get it done, mm. right? And so I think I focus a lot and I have over the course of my career at the old company I started in this one now, mm. right? With, with hiring great people, right? And there's the old adage, you got to hire slow and fire fast. And that's very true. We, we spent a tremendous amount of time putting together a great team and then you let people do their job, mm. right? And you kind of stay out of the way. Okay. And if you find the right people, the ones that are really intellectually honest and intellectually curious, that constantly ask why, that mm. constantly ask who, that constantly ask where, right? And you're there as a resource for them. And you know, like I'm also there as somebody who has had the experiences, right? So they can ask and 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 be there if they have issues, but also say, hey, wait, well, watch out, you're going down a road that's a little treacherous, but for the most part, stand back. Um, and again, tell them what you want them to do and be surprised with how they get it done. Mm. And, and and be somebody that has a tremendous amount of empathy where people are not afraid to take risks or not afraid to take a swing that perhaps they might miss. So long as they can explain the, you know, thinking behind mm -hmm. that. Here's the reason why I did that. Yeah, it didn't work, but I mm -hmm. thought X, Y, and Z. You know, that at Treadway is something that is, that is, that is, sorry, that is celebrated. Mm. Okay. And so how do you kind of foster this culture of free thinking individuals while keeping everyone kind of on path to what you're trying to do at Treadway? Is it, does it start at the hiring where you kind of get that done from the, from the beginning? It's that, does, it, yeah. It starts at the hiring and it starts at putting people in the right role, mm. right? You're not gonna take an offense alignment and make that person a receiver, right? Right. That's a recipe for a d disaster, right? Or taking a receiver and make him a center, right? Right. Then the quarterback's gonna get sacked every single time. You're not gonna get a playoff, right? Um, you, you have to hire the right people. You gotta put them in a position to be successful and what that means is they have to be successful in that position and also be successful within the role that they're playing on that team. Mm. So people need to lean on them. They can be there and be a star with those people. And they have to have the, you know, overall level of a sense of self-worth and security where they feel confident enough to lean on others too, mm. right? To ask questions, to not always have all the answers, right. to have that certain level of humility we can put your hand up and say, hey, you know, I'm pretty good. I know I'm good at what I do. I have a lot of confidence, but this is a period where I could use some help, right? Right. Um, I think that's really important. And to ha have the team around her or him that's gonna lean in with that help, right? But at the same time, you know your role. You know, people at our company know their role. They know the job that they gotta get done. Yeah. And they know that they're being counted on to get it done, right? Right. So that's a huge amount of accountability that you feel yourself. Yeah. And then you hold yourself to that standard. And when you hold yourself to that standard, you're gonna hold others to that People standard. People will follow, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and who do you learn from at this point in your career? I learn from everybody. You know, uh, I really, I learn from, uh, all the different people that we partner with, you know, at all the different agencies, uh, all of our, you know, the, the guys, um, you know, the people that are partners in the deals from our investors to our tax credit investors to our lenders are residents I learned from. I learned a tremendous amount from our residents, mm. what's working, what's not working. I, how, how can I get better at what I'm doing? How can I do a better job at, how can I do a better job at serving you? Mm. Um, I learn from the young people on our team. Mm. They're all smarter than me, every single one of them, <laughs> and they have great ideas. And, uh, you know, I, we at Treadway work hard to stay open-minded, 
to be able to take those risks, to be able to, you know, this, in this industry, especially in the affordable housing industry, oftentimes ideas become stayed and stale, but you just do the same thing because um, that's what it's always been. And when you bring in new blood and new energy and they have new ideas, some people might say that's crazy, but I can learn from these young people. Can I, can learn, I can learn from a, tr a tremendous amount. Uh, and then I learn from the math, you know, I learn from the, from the data, mm. you know, I learn a lot from the data, right? Uh, the math, you know, if, 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 uh, next week, you know, aliens came here from outer space, we would speak to the math, right? Right. Cause that's the only true universal language, a language. Right. So I learn a lot from the math. Okay, great. And will I have my final questions to wrap this up? Um, what advice would you give your 22-year-old self about life, business, and relationships? Stay humble, stay patient, work really, really hard. They're just, you know, like, unless you're a great athlete, you have some amazing vocal skills. And even then, if you have a great voice or a main athlete, or, or you're a great athlete, you have to work really, really hard. Um, who who you pick as your life partner really, really matters. Mm -hmm. I picked the best life partner, my wife, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, uh, who you bring on your team, build a great team, build a great team of those within your organization, right? And those outside of your organization who are your team on these deals, right? You get your investors, your task credit investors, your lenders, the agencies, all the attorneys, you know, build a great team. Mm. Um, uh, and that doesn't, and you're not only building a team as, you know, a CEO, but you can build a team as an analyst, mm. you know, who do you call with questions? Uh, who do you call for advice? Who's somebody who can call you for advice, mm. right? Try to, there's no level that's too junior where you, can't be of, or you can't be of service to somebody. And there's no level that's too senior where you can't learn from somebody, right? right? Uh, and that's something that I would really, you know, be of service and be open-minded where, where you can always learn. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Really thank appreciate you. you doing this Yeah, again. this was great, John. Really appreciate awesome. you.